40th birthday. Where's Tom? I'd love to see thank you also to the friends of the library here. It started with friends um, to acknowledge, of course, Miss Dorothy Reed, who was it's quite an exceptional story. One of the first attorneys in Ocean County and who founded this branch and um, we're very grateful to her that she left in her will the original bequeathment for a library. So it's a really a wonderful story. So I bring greetings on, of course, behalf of the Ocean County Library Commission and also the County of Ocean and as well as all of our staff who are working in other branches but are with everyone here in spirit to celebrate this wonderful birthday. So I do have a proclamation from the Ocean County Board of Commissioners to honor this momentous occasion. Whereas the Waretown branch was established in 1982, and whereas since then the library has continued to grow and become the community center for Ocean Township, Waretown, residents and visitors, and whereas Ocean County Library and the Waretown branch have long served as trusted and treasured institutions for people of all ages, interests, and backgrounds. And whereas the Waretown branch is at the heart of the township and schools. And whereas the Waretown branch offers members of the community opportunities to explore new passions through technology, programs, and services. And whereas library staff help patrons find tools and resources to help improve the quality of their lives. And whereas Waretown Branch strives to develop and maintain programs and collections that are as diverse as the population they serve, and whereas library staff and librarians work to create an equitable society by providing free access to accurate information for all people. Now therefore, I, John P. Kelly, Director of the Board of Commissioners of the County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, on behalf of this board, hereby proclaim October 3rd, 2022 as Waretown Library Day. <laughs> In honor. of the 40th anniversary of the Waretown Public Library and during this time invite all residents to join in expressing great pride and appreciation for the long and valuable services provided by this community resource. did a proclamation also, oh. <laughs> and I would like to read it. <laughs> proclamation, Ocean County Libraries, Waretown Branch, 40 years of service. Whereas the grand opening for the Waretown Branch was held on December 15, 1982. Whereas since the library has continued to grow and become a community center for Ocean Township residents and visitors, and whereas the Ocean County Library and the Waretown Branch have long served as trusted and treasured institutions for people of all ages, interests, and backgrounds. Whereas the Waretown Branch is at the heart of the township and schools. Whereas the Waretown Branch offers members of the community opportunities to explore new passions through technology, programs, and services. Whereas the library staff help patrons find tools, 
resources, and to help improve the quality of their lives. Whereas the Waretown branch strives to develop and maintain programs and collections that are as diverse as the populations they serve. To serve. Whereas library staff and librarians work to create an equitable society by providing free access to accurate information to all people. Now therefore be it resolved that the Township Committee of the Township of Ocean, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, proclaims the day, October 3rd, as Waretown Library Day, in honor of the 40th anniversary of the Waretown Public Library. During this time, I invite all residents to join me in expressing great pride and appreciation for the long and valuable services provided by this community resource. And this was presented the 20th day of September 2022. Friends here in the Weartown. In Weartown, from 1992 to 2012, I have made many friends and have too many memories to recall to list all of them. Before I came, became president, I helped the trustees with their annual fundraising mailing, stuffing envelopes on the pool table at a trustee's home. <laughs> Some memories stand out more than others. Having a baby shower for Carol Burrell when she was branch librarian, Bill Castanotis as our only male librarian, Valerie Bell is librarian who moved up through the ranks to assistant director. Kellyanne Pinnell as librarian and her moving up to chief librarian of branch services. Elaine McConnell as director through the years. Summer concerts out back with the band shell and awarding of dictionaries to the top 20 students in sixth grade at the Piff School. There are very few people, there are a few people who gave a lot of time to this branch. Jean Bunnell as an original trustee. Joan Hanson was an ALA who started here when the branch first opened, coming from the LBI branch when that was in the little shed over there. <laughs> Ellen Brewer, who spent many years as our ALA. And Amelia Lawton, who started the book stop in, in a shed out back and served as president of the Friends. I will close with a humorous and unbelievable anecdote. There was an evergreen tree out front which were decorated with lights for Christmas. If you look in the top left picture, that second, it used to be there. Okay, you can see the tree there, all right? One year, I drove by one day in December, and the tree was gone. It turned out someone cut the tree down one night, took it, lights and all. <gasps> Thank you all for listening to me today. <laughs> Everyone I speak to as I go about the community, they rave about this staff, how friendly they are, they help me. I don't even use the catalog because I just ask them and they look up all the books for me. <laughs> you know, I try to encourage them, that's not the best thing to do, but they do it. And the other thing is that this is the realization of a dream that Dorothy had. I did not know her. 
Um, but to think about what people made in the 60s and 70s mm -hmm. and the amount of money that she saved and used for this library. I wish she could see what it is today, but of course, we wouldn't have her money and we wouldn't have her library. <laughs> so in that sense, um, it's wonderful. And I can't say, uh, this is not like, let's pat each other on the back, but Jen walked in in June, and we had been planning this day since January. And she just, you know, really picked up and helped us. And a lot of what you see out in the library, the sales children did the uh, branches, and they did, uh, you know, they, the staff just did wonderful things for us. And so we finally made it here today. And uh, I would like to recognize uh, couple people, uh, Judy Leo and Maureen Leo, uh, did a lot of the scanning of the pictures from our original books. And we will put them out later so you can see them. And I would like to, this gentleman in the back in the blue shirt, <laughs> my husband, Bud, who has been our personal shopper, photographer, he actually did, we had the uh, help get all these pictures ready and he did all the boards that you see. And, and, also, and then we have to thank Beth Rose because she found this wonderful quote, a library in the middle of a community is a cross between an emergency exit, a life raft, and a festival. They are cathedrals of the mind, hospitals of the soul, theme parks of the imagination. And it's uh, a quote from Caitlin Moran, I'm sure none of us know her, and she's a journalist. Okay? All right. Uh, this is a PowerPoint that we have for our friends. Actually, it was very prosaic, and Jane, Jen took it, and she zipped it all up for us. So now it's much better than it was. So I hope you enjoy it. This is our mission statement. To advocate for the library in the community. Now, how do we do that? Well, first of all, get a library card. That helps a lot. Uh, secondly, keep up the circulation and get the statistics up by going to the library or going online, using <coughs> ebooks, you know, whatever uh, things you enjoy. Uh, sometimes we have to write to our congressional representatives and uh, tell them about the library because they don't always appreciate us. So that's another way that you can advocate. Uh, I don't know so much anymore because local papers seem to be dying, but you, writing letters to the editor when something, you go to a great program or something happens, that's a, a, an excellent thing to do. And then know what your library offers. It's not just books and magazines and DVDs. Uh, there are all kinds of databases that you can use at home. Uh, I wish we had them when my children were growing up and they would say at 8.30, oh, I was supposed to get a book from the library. <laughs> and it closed at 9. Um, so, you know, and then the other thing is, I think, know what libraries offer and also know that they serve a diverse community, which is what um, our director said to us. Uh, there's, uh, you have to realize we're maybe a small town but there are many libraries that are serving much more diverse communities, and we need to appreciate that, that they do that. Okay, and then of course funding programs, that's one of the things the Friends are all about. And um, Mrs. Bonnell is sitting right here, and she was one of the first trustees. And also, when you read the 40 years of minutes, which I have done twice in my <laughs> service as president, you realize that she was one of the original people who started the saving for the library with the friends. So that's why we are both 40. Um, well, I'm a lot more than 40, but anyway. And also, you, our theme of connectivity between the library and the community, which reflects the library mission statement. Okay, sorry, that was long, but I have a lot to say. And in the beginning, you've heard this. In 1977, Dorothy V. Reeve, whose picture is out above the water fountain out there, was the person who left this money. And it was a surprise. A couple summers ago, I interviewed Jean and uh, Mrs. Collimer, Marie Collimer, and Marie said she didn't know that she was going to be given this 
task to build this library and be a trustee and fund it. it took five years, but in 1982, the library began on this land and the friends formed their group. And in, then that went on and they had to pay for the light, the heat, you know, all these things, maintenance. And then in 1997, they incorporated and became part of fully of Ocean County Library. Can I interrupt you for one yes. second at that point? When you say in 1997, most of you probably don't realize that this room was not on. Mm -hmm. This was when we opened. It was a re grand reopening in 1997 yes. with the addition of this room. The second Monday of the month at 7 p.m. is when we meet from September to June. However, as we have <clears throat> grown a little older, in January, February, and March, we do meet at 1.30 because we don't want to be out in the icy evening. Uh, our Friends membership is $5 annually, whether you are a single person joining or a family. And you may be an active member and come to our meetings and support us, or you can just give us your money. We're happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have had prizes to encourage membership. Uh, actually, my husband is an artist, and he painted the bird on the the bird painting of the egret on the, this side, and that was a, a prize. Carla Lounsbury, who lives over in Skippers Cove, won it. We also had uh, a basket for wine and cheese at one time, but then we also did a basket with our T-shirts. We had uh, an Alice Hoffman book, a candle. Uh, a, I think there's other things in there that I can't quite see. But sometimes you have to have a little incentive to get people to renew and join. And we've had some fun activities during the pandemic. Of course, they were curtailed. But uh, we have Tracy uh, Vincent from Whiting Flores come, uh, and she just did a program last year. Uh, and we had this program uh, in 2019, and then we have Just Killing Time, which is a local business, and uh, this snowman, I believe, is that yours, Kathy? Yeah. That yes. belongs to our vice yeah. president, yeah. Kathy Rahawi, who did her snowman. Obviously, it's in her kitchen right then. Okay, and then things that we have done to um, sponsor the friends. Uh, we've had summer programs like the Lizard Guys, uh, bonk is always popular. Many of the branches have bonk. Um, we've sponsored the uh, reading baskets for uh, children. Uh, we had Jessica Carroll here for a summertime concert at one point. And those are our Mahjong ladies. We actually have, what, about 13 to 15 yeah. people who come every Wednesday. Actually, there's been complaints that there's no place to park when they come. <laughs> but they are, they've are they become friends. They're from different branches, and they seem to have a wonderful time. Okay. And we have sponsored the, uh, we joined with the school, uh, with Mr. Connor and Dr. Lomeran, and uh, we had uh, a holiday tree lighting and partnership, and these are some of the children that came to sing. And of course, these are some of us who were there to uh, assist. And it was the annual tree lighting service. And these are some of the fundraisers we have. We are so lucky. We have the book stop at the back of the build of in the little building back there. And it's a wonderful service to the community because te this is one of the teachers who came. She was so thrilled for $10 she got all these books. Uh, we had a psychic fair which turned out to be a wonderful experience. When I, someone first mentioned it to me, I was like, oh, really? A psychic fair? <laughs> Turns out it's a big deal. <laughs> and um, we also have Dine and Donate with Christie's. And we had one bling sale. We've been waiting and hoping we'll have another one this year. So these are the things we use and do to raise money. Last September, we opened our bookstore for the first time since it was closed with the pandemic. And we set up tents outside. Uh, we had uh, membership uh, with, and we had quite a lot of people. And our book stop chairperson is Judy Leo, and she's assisted by her sister Maureen Leah and Charlene DiMartina, and Ellen works in the bookstore. 
Uh, over the years, many, put your hand up if you've worked in the bookstore over the years. <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, this is one of our main sources of, of funding. <coughs> And then we partnered with the Priff School and with uh, Weartown Elementary a few years ago when Melissa was our uh, librarian, and we bought two Kindles. And we, when we drew the kids' names, it was to get them to get library cards. And they had a drawing, and uh, both of them were kind of scared when we went over to give them their prize. They thought they were in trouble. <laughs> this one was like, but of course you can see that they were quite happy once they actually got them and so it was a wonderful partnership between the school and the library and we had a 35th anniversary party uh, it was before the pandemic uh, we had uh, our books out and uh, which you know you will see later on and many people came and we had uh, a wonderful time and we did get um, several new members at that time. And Tina Wetter, who then was the mayor, came and presented the proclamation to Melissa Rutkowski, our branch manager then, and to myself. And then during the pandemic, oh, it was very difficult to do things, but um, there were take and make kits, and I, I don't know if that was throughout all the libraries, but they were very popular. Some were for children and some were for adults. And the Friends did sponsor some of those things. And this is our Where Town Friends Love the Library. Uh, we decided that we needed a banner, and my husband Bud was nice enough to give us four different choices. We really had a hard time between love the library and perfect together. We kept coming up with the same number all the time. So we asked Kathy Rahoe's grandson to come and pick, the, and this is what he chose. He didn't see it, he did it without looking. And so this is our banner to, uh, and we used a local business, which is TLC Designs down on Route 9. But we want people to know that this library is loved by us and that we support it. And we thank Bud for designing it for us. So if you have not joined the Friends or renewed your membership, there's no better time than now. <laughs> so uh, while we are having some food and while we are in a little while, our uh, musician will be here and we will have music from the 80s. So. Um, I hope that you know you've enjoyed seeing what we do, and that um, we'll continue to love the library. So now is where I have to talk. I'm real sorry. I try not to cry. All right. So I want to thank everyone for joining us for the 40 years of the Weartown Ranch. Sorry, I just saw Elizabeth Curran in the back of the room to start to cry. She was my librarian in the Tom River branch when I was little, so. Um, first, my staff for all of their hard work, both in helping to get the branch ready and talking me off the ledge more than once. Um, to the friends who put so much time and effort into bringing today together, we would not be here without you. So thank you very, very much. Committee woman Lydia Dodd, library director Susan Quinn, assistant director Sarah Sigler. Um, Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to be here with us. Um, thank you to our fantastic facilities staff. They work so hard to make our branch shine. Melissa, Gigi, and Becky, um, thank you for your guidance and support. I'm fine. Well, I've navigated a new position and anniversary. Um, these three women have had some phone calls since June, let me tell you, I'm really sorry. Um, so not many people remember um, the secret garden that was set up <clears throat> in the Tom River branch many, many moons ago. Uh, it stayed with me all these years, and I found it as a quiet place to read or do homework when I was little. The library has always been a magical place for me, and that secret garden became a physical representation of the magic that the books I love so much help. 
I hope that our patrons have been able to and continue to find their own magic here at the Weartown Branch. Um, now please enjoy music, refreshments, and the wonderful Weartown Branch. Public libraries. Like, share, and subscribe for more great videos.